this is David. Today we're going to talk about Azure Databricks. Databricks is built on top of HD Insight Spark. HD Insight is Microsoft's implementation of the open source Hadoop project deployed on Azure. And Hadoop is a, a set of open source tools typically used for big data. It's very popular among the open source community. It's typically deployed on Linux, and that's where it's deployed on Azure. And Spark is a general purpose compute engine that's part of that. So it's really, really used for, for building just about anything you want to be, to, to be deployed onto a highly scalable, highly reliable platform like Azure. Uh, now, Spark isn't always the easiest thing to use. So what Databricks does is it adds some abstraction layers on top of that, making it simple to deploy jobs and create Jupyter notebooks and do some of the common things that you might want to do onto HD Insight Sparks. It also makes it easy to auto-scale your application by simply setting some configuration properties. Let me show you how to do this in Azure. Here I am in the Azure portal. and I'm going to click Create a Resource, which is how I create just about anything in Azure. And I'll type in here Data Bricks and select Azure Databricks. And this describes what Databricks is. If I click Create, this dialog comes up. These are called Blades. And I'll give this Databricks Service Workspace a name. I'm going to call it DG Test Data Bricks WS for Workspace. I'll put this in a workspace or in a resource group. I'll call it DG Test Data Bricks RG. I'll put it in Central US because I'm in Chicago right now. And for the pricing tier, I'll just accept the cheaper pricing tier because that's how I roll. I'm going to pin this to the dashboard to make it easier to find, and then I'll click Create. Now this might take a few minutes, so I'll pause the video and come back when it's done. I'm back. That only took about two or three minutes, and this workspace was created, and this dialog automatically came up but I had pinned it to the dashboard so I could find it anyway. And from here, I can click Launch Workspace. When I do that, it may ask you to log in. I have my credentials cached, so it just asks me who I am. And it'll sign me in automatically from those credentials. And then it brings up this workspace dialog here. And from here, I can very easily create a notebook or jobs or a new cluster or some table to store data libraries and so on. The first thing I want to do is to create a Databricks cluster. These are the compute nodes on which all my jobs will run. I can give this, name, this cluster any name that I want. I'll call it DG Test Cluster tell it what version number of everything I want to use. I want to use uh, Apache Spark 2.3. That sounds fine. Python version 3 sounds good to me. And then over here, this is important. These are the number of worker nodes in your cluster. So this is actually going to do the work that I'm going to deploy to this thing here. And if I check Enable Auto Scaling, which is checked by default, then it'll automatically monitor to see how much resources are being used. And when the CPU or the compute resources start to go low, it'll automatically ode a, uh, add another node to that cluster. But it'll stop at 8. I can bump that up to 10 if I want to, and so on. I can also tell it to automatically shut down if it's not doing anything for, let's give it 60 minutes of inactivity. This is a good idea because that'll save me money. I'm going to be paying for all these compute nodes for the entire time that this cluster is up and running. Once I'm there, I will cri click Create Cluster. And again, this will take a few minutes, so I will pause the video at this point. I'm back, and that cluster took about five minutes to create, and we started it up, and now it's running, and it is. Um, I can click at it and look at it here. I can stop it, restart it, etc. Create another one just like it. But what I want to do, it's not useful unless I deploy something to it. And I can deploy 
things to this cluster from right here. New notebook, job, table, library. Let's deploy a Jupyter notebook. Jupyter notebooks are a uh, combination of formatted text and executable code. They're really nice for, dis for, for disseminating reports with real-time data with explanatory text above it. Um, they're very user-friendly. They're easy to distribute because they're all based online. So I'll create one here. I'll call it DG Test Notebook. I have a choice of languages. I'll pick Python. And the cluster I'll run it on is that one, the one I just created. So I'll create this notebook. And it comes up pretty quickly. There's, a, there's one cell in this notebook. In this cell, I can add some code right here. I'm, just I'm going to assign to this variable file name this string, which points to a comma separated value file which has information about forest fires in Portugal I think so it's a good thing to if you want to do some machine learning analysis on forest fires it's a good place to start and then I also import a popular Python library called pandas which is good for opening and manipulating and reading data files and I can run this go ahead and run all right here and it ran it there's no output for this one but I can add some more to it. So if I wanted to, for example, um, add a cell below this, then I can do that. And what I'll do here is I have a bit of code stored away. Well, I'll use pandas to read that CSV file into a data frame, and that data frame, with that data frame, I can manipulate the file or look at it. For example, I can run this df.head, which will show me the first five rows in that CSV file. Or if I add an optional parameter, I could run, I could show the first eight rows or whatever I want to do. Or the last five rows, if I wanted to do that, and so on. I can also add. A cell to do some format of the text and to do that by default we're going to run this in Python that's what I told it so if I want to do something some other language like for example if I wanted to do markdown I'd have to start my cell with percent MD and then I could say some use markdown for my formatted text um, And now when I run this, I get the code executing again. With this output, but I also get this formatted text based on my markdown. So here, this is this will will not tax the processing power of my cluster, but if it does, then I have set my cluster up to auto scale and handle automatically adding new nodes to it as needed and removing them as they're not needed. In this video, we've shown you how to create a Databricks workspace in Azure and how to create a cluster in that database and deploy a Jupyter Notebook to that cluster. This is David. Thank you for watching.